This is Hinos' Sport, bringing you that heat and that fire. We keeping a foot on the what? On the next. We keeping a foot on the what? On the next. <laughs> we told you, man. Lions only fashion, dog. The Charlos, man. Yeah, it's time to put respect on the Charlo brothers' name. Hey, Ox, man, let's talk to these people, man. What's up, man? What's good with you, fam? Hey, dog. I told you racist, bigoted, hating, jealous, envious, weak, beta, moist, lames. <laughs> I told you suckers, bro. I told you suckers, especially all you ones that sit up here and hate on black fighters. Mm -hmm. I told you that this crybaby was going to be a banana split. I told yep. you all that. Yep. Banana split. <laughs> Banana sleep, banana split. That man got his guts busted. <laughs> you see him on the ground? You see you see him? This motherfucker was... I thought this motherfucker was dead, man. I thought he was dead, dog. This, this, this motherfucker was on the ground. Convulsing. <laughs> oh, on the ground, Harlem shaking around this motherfucker, dog. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This, this, is, this is the shit that I live for. This is the shit that I live for. This is why I do this shit, man, because I love when people talk crazy. I didn't respond to any of that shit online. Now these cats, these cats deleting their comments now. <laughs> <laughs> deleting comments. Don't want to respond. Quiet as a church mouse. And round one, mm -hmm. got his ass tumbled. Yep. Okay, that left hook hit the top of that crown. Mm-hmm. And, and it's in the and the, the style bender one. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. I would love to see Cody Covington bring his ass up a couple weight classes and fight the style bender. Exactly. And talk that Trump, talk that Trump shit with a real dog. We already knew. Mm -hmm. Woodley, hey Woodley, you need to you need to go ahead and retire, bro. Yeah. Don't ever try to carry the culture on your back like that. Fight a real one though. Mm -hmm. It's some people out there that got your number, but uh, back to Charlo. From the opening round, all them motherfucking Dominicans got quiet. Yep. That left hook hit the top of that crown. Mm -hmm. He lost his balance. He stepped backwards. He was trying to get the fuck up out of there. Yep. He was trying to get up out of there. He was already in retreat. Back. And I said this in my comments on boxing scene. It's a group on uh, on Facebook called BoxingScene.com. You've been slept once, you'll be slept again. Mm -hmm. He was on Back. the ground, cry on the ground, crying, slump, <laughs> split, mm -hmm. banana split, laid the fuck out like a banana peel, <laughs> laid out like a banana peel, guts Woo. busted open. Yes, sir. Having a convulsion. <laughs> and, went, and went from a convulsion into crying. Exactly. Man, come on, man. Come on, dude. I'm telling you, man, you guys can't predict against us, man. I'm not saying that I'm always right, but mm -hmm. you need to really underdigulate what the hell I be trying to tell y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You need to really underdigulate what I be trying to tell y'all. Now, with Big Charlo, I'm going to tell you about Big Charlo. They're going to try to take away from that fight, but I'm going to tell you something about that fight. He didn't get the knockout. He had a very tough game opponent that wasn't dehydrated. He wasn't undersized. He wasn't old. He wasn't a broken mm -hmm. fighter. That was a blood and guts fight. You don't see Canelo. You don't hit. You don't see Canelo. I'm looking at the, the replay right now. Look at this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Look at he, he, his soul start lifting out of his body. Look at him. <laughs> he looked at Charlo and then he he looked at Charlo. He got hit. He fell down. He looked at Charlo. He went and took him. Whoa. <laughs> that nigga ain't had no real. He motherfucker ain't even had no real Caesar. That wasn't mm -hmm. no Caesar. Mm -hmm. Shit. <laughs> motherfucker. That wasn't no real Caesar. That no Caesar, dog. Hey, yep. man, listen. Big Charlo had his work cut out for him. You don't see that kind of work rate from Canelo. That's mm -hmm. why he wants fighters to not fully hydrate, that he don't want them to have enough energy to continue yep. to press him like that. 
Right. The reason why he let you know he 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 didn't really pull out some concessions for Triple G. This is before his contract got to where it had a little bit more control. But number mm -hmm. one, it's like you know it's not hard to get away from Triple G anyway. He yep. got more lateral agility, you know, than uh than Triple G anyway. So he wasn't really hard to uh you know get away from and evade and stuff like that. But somebody that got more tenacity like an Andrade or a Saunders or a Charlo, he knows that he can't withstand that kind of pressure. Facts. He knows he can't withstand that kind of pressure. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why he's not fighting these fighters. Yep. Okay. He ain't gonna fight somebody like uh like how Charlo did. He's not gonna take it all the way to 12 rounds. He fought a tough fighter, but he he laid a lot of good shots on his guy. The shots he was laying on his guy, Canelo can't take none of that, bro. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Canelo can't. can't take that. Can Canelo can, you will see Canelo get systematically broke down. Yes, sir. And so, you know, we were talking about some stuff behind the scenes, right? And what we were talking about, I want to share with you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have two mm -hmm. different kind of workout fitness individuals. You got some people that can really get it in from at home. And you got some people where they need to be in the actual gym to feel that energy. Some of us can shoot hoops and have a good practice by ourselves, but some of us shoot better at the gym in front of other people. Some of us can dance better at home in the mirror versus some of us can dance better in the club around a bunch of people vibing some people get you know ah. thrive off that vibe and so what you're starting to see in sports period but especially in the sport of boxing you're starting to see what kind of fighter that fighter is some of them yep. you know can fight real good in the gym and when they mm -hmm. go into this format of the pandemic format it's no more than about 50 people in the room so it's more closer to the home gym environment some people thrive in that environment but some people need that extra boost from the crowd to really get the ju get that juices flowing i mean when you have the full crowd there, you also have um, – let me turn this down. When you have the full crowd there, you also have uh, the element of your family being there, your loved ones being there in the front row. You got the stars there, you know, so it's more energy in the room. The banana got smashed, you know what I'm saying? I think the reason why we didn't see a knockout, you know, tonight is because, number one, he fought a really tough game opponent, but you also didn't have that razzle and dazzle boosting his energy and his adrenaline from the crowd. This is like, you know, a home workout or like a, a private indoor gym workout. You know, you're going to perform two different ways. A real a real star, a real fighter is going to perform no matter what, which he did perform because he, he won the bout, you know, but uh, I definitely think if he had the crowd roaring behind him, we probably would have seen a stoppage in some of those areas where he had the guy hurt. But little Charlo got it done, striking like a straight pit viper. I like the elusiveness. I like the lateral agility. I like the head movement. I like the way he performed a little bit better defense as far as like deflecting punches and shots and stuff like that. Yeah, with that moisture you was talking about. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of that moisture. He looking slow. He got the win though. Woo. He got the win though. You, you, how can you call him slow when, when, when Canelo exactly. only boxes a cumulative amount of maybe about, you know, 30 seconds to 45 seconds, maybe at best a minute uh, you know a minute and a half cumulative mm -hmm. he don't stay on the gas pedal the whole round so how can you say somebody looks slow when you got another person that be sandbagging but they don't say exactly. that canelo be running they don't look at it like that but mm -hmm. when a black fighter you know what i'm saying choose a clock they say he running but whatever exactly. man you know it is what it is but you know like i said only a beta don't want to give another you know what i'm saying alpha they props man this cat both Damn of his brothers shit. came out there on a the pay-per-view and they both won. They went home with all the uh, the the hardware, and it was a great night. Even the undercard, even though I, I would have hoped it was you know, more notable fighters, it was still some good scraps on there too. So they did a good job tonight. They gave exactly. people, you know, they, they money's worth. That seventy five dollars was worth it. Mm hmm. Listen, man. The bottom line is this: if you sitting here tripping and you saying great performance on both, but I expected more from Mel, what kind of fight were you watching? <laughs> I think you're going to need double fucking glasses. Mel dropped this motherfucker three times. And every time he dropped this motherfucker, Banana, you could tell he was disoriented. So what fucking fight did you watch? Mel not only got vindicated on the double header, Mel emphatically stopped this motherfucker. He turned his ass into Banana Republic, just like I said. Let me say it again. He turned this motherfucker into Banana Republic. His banana got fucking split. The bottom line is this, man. The Lions only fashion dominated out here in these boxing streets. It's time to give the Lions only credit, though. If y'all ain't giving the Lions only credit, 
we ain't talking fucking boxing man what we talking about is insecurity what we talking about is misery what we talking about is supposed fight fans like we said that only root and support the fighters that they want because they know tonight was the charlo brothers night tonight was defined by the charlo brothers and if you don't give the charlo brothers the the do and the credit that they deserve maul basically do dominated sergey derevinchko what are you talking about what fight did you watch did you watch sergey derevinchko versus triple g did you watch that fight triple g basically walked away with a robbery did you see sergey derevinchko's face in that fight against jamal charlo this is what i'm talking about if y'all not giving the charlo brothers credit then when it's all said and done y'all not about the sport of boxing y'all about being trolls you guys are about being haters man this is what we were talking about ox when we said they can't stand the the lions only that's what he said he knows funny as fuck banana republic damn right banana republic got his banana fucking split bottom line is this ox if they ain't giving lions only, split listen man they ain't fight fans because real fight fans whether you love or you hate a fighter when a fighter does great and they give you a great performance you got to tip your hats off to them you got to say salute there are times where a fighter that i may too much not like they get give me a great performance against a fighter that i was rooting for you know how many times i've dropped the video which is not many times but i've dropped the video where i said hey it's time to eat some crow it's time for y'all motherfuckers to eat crow because the charlos out here in these boxing streets they're doing heavyweight lifting man jamel charlo just collected three fucking belts jamal charlo dominated an effective opponent so what are we talking about here this is not even about boxing anymore it's about pure fucking hatred and if you don't give the charlo brothers their credit and you don't get behind the charlo brothers tonight and you celebrate boxing then you as a fight fan is the reason why the sport is in the position that it's in it's the reason why the pay-per-views are not doing what they spoke to it's the reason why boxing is in the soft market it's the reason why boxing is struggling because these type of kooky ass fight fans man bottom line is this classic dolce and Choco dice rudy poor and plum plum brains ultra fanboys with the ultra fanboy rhetoric like esau the devil said is fucking mad jamel charlo dispatched this motherfucker, man so i don't want to hear this fuck shit, man like derrick james said banana split banana republic my fighters is the most athletic my fighters is the most dominant it's time to give derrick james his credit ox if derrick james don't get 2020 trainer of the year after earl the truth spence danny garcia's cherry come november 21st we gonna have a fucking problem houston houston we gonna have a fucking problem talk to them ox man look man this motherfucker was on the ground convulsing dog mm -hmm. the man was on the ground convulsing all right all this hate all this discontent even well before the fight you know these guys got a youtube channel they've been showing their you know estate you know their property their real estate you know what they're doing with their family mm -hmm. uh, you know their business ventures and things of that nature how they're growing how they're expanding all you see in the comments is how can they afford that they gonna be broke exactly. you know they 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 wasting their money but mikey garcia it's cool for him to have a car a, a garage full of you know luxury vehicles it's cool for him to have real estate but they don't want to see the black man having that mm -hmm. they don't like seeing the black man having that oh he going you yeah, know here nobody said that mikey garcia is spending too much money exactly mikey garcia had a a big easter fight he had a broner fight he mm -hmm. had a spence fight mm -hmm. He got Lamborghinis. He got Bentleys. He got Rolls Royces. He got real estate. He got this. He got that. He wouldn't have got none of that if it wasn't for him stepping into the ring with them black fighters and dealing with Al Heyman. Facts. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even be on that level. Okay, a lot of these fighters wouldn't even have the opportunity to make the kind of money they make if it wasn't for them walking through black fighters or mm -hmm. having to face black fighters. Exactly. So, start giving black fighters the respect and the credit they deserve stop just inherently hating on black fighters 
Exactly. Because of your because of your bigotry, you're it, it, it's ignorant and it's weak. Facts. It's ignorant right. and it's and it's weak. You're right. To sit there and hate on the fighter only simply due to the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. A lot of Dominicans they don't want to admit that they are black. Mm -hmm. They don't want to admit, excuse me, their true origins. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of Dominican fans talking very bigoted, you know, in the comments leading up to this fight. And just the, because they're despised towards black people, they just inherently, inherently look down on Charlo. He's scum, you know, and plus, you know, other, other non-Dominican, other ethnicities or whatever that just despise black fighters. So exactly. I love when they, you know, if you look at these highlights from even Jamal, like I said, the reason why I don't take anything from his performance is because a lot of fighters would not have been able to endure that level of pressure and power from an opponent. Mm -hmm. Crawford couldn't stand up to an op opponent that game. And I know they're different, uh, you know, weight classes or whatever the case may be, but Crawford couldn't stand up to nothing like that. You know, people praising Pacquiao, whatever the case was. As soon as Pacquiao faced someone that could really put pressure on his ass, he buckled and folded. He lost a horn. Mm -hmm. He's a legend. He's a legend, though. He's a legend. He has a better career than Floyd, but he done lost to nobodies. He done lost to nobodies, man. Like I said, man, you got to put respect on people's name. You know, respect is earned. And at this point, if the Charlos have not earned your, your, your respect, then it's only safe to assume that you may have some kind of mental disability. You may be a little bit mentally challenged, mm -hmm. you know, because the way that you're processing logic, <laughs> it's clear that you don't have a normal frame of thinking. Exactly. Like I said, it brought me great joy to see, you know, this kid convulsing on the floor. You know, he came in shape. He mm -hmm. was fresh, you know what I'm saying? He 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 came out there, you know, Charlo had I actually, you know, pretty much been off since last year. You know, mm -hmm. he hadn't had a fight since December of last year. You know, Banana just got this belt a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. So listen, man. I called it. I like I said, I, I I wanted to see a knockout, whatever the case is, but I had to respect the fact that this guy was really game and he was pressing the entire fight. But if exactly. you look at the highlights, the uppercuts that Charlo was catching his opponent with, the mm -hmm. punishment that he inflicted on his on his opponent, the mm -hmm. condition that his uh his his opponent left out of that fight, that that's enough for me. He he really did beat the fuck out of this dude. And at the same time, man, you gotta give you gotta give the uh the opponent, you know, his mm -hmm. credit also. You know, he took a beating but he was a game opponent. He was a game warrior that night, and he was coming in there right. to win. He didn't come in there to lay down. He was not no bum. He mm -hmm. wasn't no Tijuana taxi driver. Mm -hmm. You know, he came, he came out there to win. You know, and there's a reason why he deserved the right to, to be in that fight. He wasn't no bum. Mm -hmm. He was not a bum. He just lost to an incredible fighter. He, he put up the best fight he could. He didn't fight a quitter. That mm -hmm. dude gave his all and stayed on Charlo ass that entire fight. And yep. That's what you want. You don't want no fighter that's going to fatigue. You don't want no fighter that's uh, dehydrated. Now, if he exactly. had dehydrated his opponent, if he had used his A-side authority to dehydrate mm -hmm. his opponent, you would have seen a knockout. Yep. You would have seen a knockout tonight. But see, you know, what goes around comes around. And, and that's why, you know, you got to pay respect to people who don't want to try to cheat you. They just yep. want to give you a fair one. That's the exactly. person that you really want to fear, a person that to give you a fair one. You know, a person mm -hmm. that's going to cheat you, that's a sign of fear anyway. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of fear anyway. That's a sign of lack of confidence and self-esteem anyway. When they when they have when they feel like cheating you is the only way that they could beat you. Exactly. When they gotta take PEDs, when they gotta put in stuff in the contract, you know, to, to slow you down and, and, and kind of dim your light, you know, that's you know, lack of self-esteem and confidence within themselves. And so mm -hmm. we gotta start. Not we, because I give I show respect when respect is due. You know, I would have got right on here, even if the Charlos would have lost. Exactly. I was already prepared for it. We already talked about it. Yep. You know, uh, but very impressed with how everything went tonight. And like I said, man, the things that I say in the, on these lives and the stuff I say in these group chats or whatever, 
You got to take heed to it. You got to mm -hmm. take heed to it. And mm -hmm. a lot of the things that I pointed out about the Charlo brothers we've seen tonight, I said that I wanted to see Charlo exhibit more elusiveness. Yep. I wanted him to use his, his lateral agility more. I didn't want to see him head hunting. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see him go to the body. You know, I still would have liked to see him go to the body a little bit more. You know, but it, I, I will take the the agility and breaking, uh, you know, Banana's rhythm. You know, he broke his rhythm. He wouldn't even let him get his feet set. You know, mm -hmm. he set traps for him. Instead of head hunting, he set traps up for him and was able to get him. You know, it's just uh, I want to see him execute these traps a little bit faster. You know, so, yeah. hey. Okay, he so says, sorry, I never go to Sean Porter on 160. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dog, y'all crazy, bro. <laughs> crazy, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Folks, it's crazy, man. What y'all on tonight, man? I know y'all sipping hey. something real hey. tough. Y'all on that, I'm on that sipping, water tonight. They sipping that good shit, man. The bottom line is this, Ox, and we got to call a spade a spade here, man. Yeah. The Charlo brothers came in. They did, a fucking, they did their fucking thing. It was a hell of an ass whooping, and it's time to put respect on the Charlo brothers' name. If yeah. you're a fight fan, if you all about let's just keep it back, sit, let it keep it back, sit. even though it's a one trick pony viewpoint narrative on how to keep it boxing, because boxing is a three prong monster, as we see PBC's put it in on, which is economics, politics, and pugilism. Aaron a fool, man. Gotta give them credit. Aaron said that was a hell of an ass whooping, but I respect <laughs> it. Facts. Yeah. Facts. You know what Lions only male pound for pound number one jamel charlo collected three belts tonight i don't want to hear no bullshit pandering narrative or oh, the charlos just stepped up i don't want to hear no bullshit pandering narrative that the charlos are now for real or doing their thing give the charlos respect because there is a long history of what the charlos was doing to prepare their way to get to where they are at this point all of these fighters that they were fighting, Ox, when they were saying, oh, they fight nothing but bums. You know why they were fighting the fighters that they were fighting? And last time I checked, don't be calling fighters bums and shit like that. When a fighter steps into the ring, it's a small fraternity of fighters that step into the ring. Give them their fucking respect and give them their just due. They fought the opponents that was in front of them because the actual opponents that they were seeking out ducked them. We got to call a spade a spade here, man. And now Jamel Charlo... Turn his ass into Banana Republic. He made the banana fucking split. And Maul didn't get the knockout, but Maul had a dominating opponent. When I saw Sergey Derevinchko's face, it looked like both of his eyes was about to close. Whoop! Let me say that again, because what I said was so deep and profound. That one needs to marinate in the corpus callosum and in the cerebellum. Hear me? Hear me? Well, when you look at Sergey Derevinchko's face, his face looked like both of his eyes we're about to close up. I was seeing uppercut city. I was seeing right hooks and left hook lane. I was seeing stiff jab boulevard. That's what I was seeing all fucking fight. Jamal Charlo dominated his opponent. He proved that he was 10 steps ahead of Triple G. Now you guys see why in, in Lions Only fashion, Cinnamon Alvarez has been ducking Jamal Charlo for all these years. The ducking has been around for, for damn near, what was it, since 2013? Seven fucking years. This is why this dude got the WBC French fry belt or IE franchise belt. Because he took that belt to duck who's the super champion right now? Jamal Charlo. Now you guys see why the Charlo brothers are the most feared and revered brothers in boxing. They are doing basically stuff that we haven't seen brothers, siblings, any relatives in boxing do. And they're doing this respectively at quality weight classes. Super welterweight division, 154. That's a huge division in boxing. 160, that's even a bigger division in boxing. That's a transitional division. That's a division that Marvin Hagler made famous. That's a division that Bernard Hopkins made famous. That's a division that Roy Jones Jr. made famous. And look at the Charlo brothers, man. They're dominating these divisions respectfully. They're doing their things. They're doing heavyweight lifting. And if it's, if you guys are not giving the Charlo brothers their respect, they're just due, then you're not about the sport of boxing, man. 
love or hate the Charlo brothers, you have to respect the performance that you saw tonight. I mean, even with the undercard not being the best, the Charlo brothers and their fights, what they did, Oxteel, in those fights, the Charlo brothers by themselves carried the promotion tonight. They carried that shit, man. And Lions only promotion, y'all did y'all thing. See, this is why they can't stand the PVC model because the PVC model empowers these black men to have their own LLCs, to be independent contractors, to be their own businessmen, to govern their own affairs. And that's what they did. And you looked on the floor of that ring, of that square circle, you saw Lions only promotions. That's a huge accomplishment. That's a huge feat. That's something to hold your hat on to say that your promotion did this fight. This is why Al Heyman is not a promoter. He's an advisor because he's advising a bunch of these independent contractors that have their own LLCs, i.e. they're being their own bosses to govern their affairs. Notice it doesn't say PBC promotions. It said Lions only promotions. That means the Charlos ran their affairs. They're only advised by the stewardship and the savviness of Al Heyman, who's an astute and a shrewd businessman, and he's a lawyer by trade. So he's going to give them all the X's and O's when it comes from the contractual standpoint. But when it's all said and done, these guys got to go out and follow their LLCs in whatever respective states they are in. These guys got to go out and fill out their taxes. These guys got to go out and do their things. The Charlo brothers are dominating boxing as brothers and if they're not getting the respect that they deserve as the brothers that they are and dominating the sport the way that they did tonight i don't want to hear it and then you had a whole bunch of people saying well the charlo brothers their uh pay-per-view is gonna flop really their pay-per-view is gonna flop that means you're not a fight fan if you're expecting a fighter to flop that means you're not willing to support see this is what i was talking about early on in the earlier live when i said all of these supposed fight fans, they're the reason why the sport is in the gutter the way it's been. is because they want their cake and they want to eat it too, and they don't even want to support the sport. You know what I'm saying? I went out and supported the fight, and I'm glad I did because guess what? I got my money's worth for that shit. The Charlos brothers, they did their thing. They dominated, man. And anybody that's hating on the Charlo brothers or hating on Derrick James at this point, you're looking stupid out here in these boxing streets. That's just the bottom line. That was a big fight. It was a great fight. And that fight did, both fights did their thing. What we saw from Jamal Charlo is a fighter that can go 12 rounds with a quality opponent and emphatically dispatch him. What we saw from Mel was a fighter that now is picking his shots. His defense was sharper too, Oxtail. I didn't see Jamal Charlo getting tagged up as much, even though he was on the front foot. I saw him in the high guard. I saw him slipping punches. I saw him being defensively responsible before he struck. This wasn't like the first Harrison fight. So y'all got to give credit where credit is due. If y'all sitting here still hating on this promotion and you guys are still hating on what you guys saw tonight, then I don't know what the fuck y'all watched. Yeah, you know, uh, like I said, um, they did a great job. They controlled the narrative. They carried the promotion they lived up to the to the hype people expected for them to fail um you know i don't really understand this is the biggest thing i understand about people in america how can you call yourself an american and go against your hometown boys mm -hmm. just because of skin color mm -hmm. i don't understand a lot of these immigrants or descendants of immigrants that come to America for a better life right. and go against a fucking American. Mm -hmm. Parasites, cancers of society. And so that's why, you know, I don't really interject when I hear bigots get on a lot of immigrants because you have a lot of immigrants that forgot where the hell they came from or forgot not only where, not where they came from, but forgot what allowed them to get to where they are. The fact that you can even have the speech, the freedom of speech to speak on certain things mm -hmm. is due to a lot of the movements that our ancestors did. And it's like the, exactly. the disrespect that we get, regardless of whatever we have done, is laughable. Mm -hmm. It's laughable because at this point, you can't be a person of high intelligence 
you cannot come up with a legitimate reason to hate these guys. Mm -hmm. It's just weak. It's just weakness at this point. Yep. I'm just registering it as weakness at this point because there's no logical reasoning behind why you would hate these guys. Exactly. There's no logical reason why you, uh, you can, there's no definitive reason why you should come up and say, oh, you know, Canelo, he, he don't got to fight them. Mm -hmm. OK, these dudes, you know, have more than just, uh, you know, a boxing career. They have a, a training facility. They do stuff in the community. They inspire a lot of people that actually, you know, take heed to what they're doing. And, you know, yep. they come from a, they come from a biracial family. So that's another mm -hmm. thing that, that trips me out is because they come from a biracial family. They have biracial kids that are, you know, half Latino, Hispanic, you know, and black. So, you know, they have a, they come from a blended family, a blended background. Yep. And, it, and it's like you still have the other half of, you know, they should have as many brown fans as they have black fans. Exactly. You know, but, um, you know, people's, you know, insecurities and stuff like that, you know, it's an insecurity when you can't show props to another person or you only show props to people that look like you. That's exactly. insecurity, you know. So, like I said, we ain't going to focus on that. You know, like I said, I hope they continue to keep building and keep growing for them to have all of that hardware all under one roof. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, you know, that we've seen both brothers show a, you know another wrinkle to their game and so it makes me even more excited to see arrow spence it makes me even more excited to see what arrow spence is going to come out the bag and do i know him watching the fights you know tonight it got him fired up yep. i know this got tank fired up i know this got everybody fired up who has fights coming up in the next few months right. you know so this was big for the for the game of boxing i was one of the ones that would criticize the price of the fight i also criticized the uh, the opponents on the undercard but mm -hmm. you know the finished product it was a good product and i, I did yep. say that before i was prepared to be surprised about what the finished product would be you know because like i said i didn't hear about i didn't know a lot of the people that were on the harrison harrison undercard i didn't i never heard mm -hmm. of them some of them i did like a drug but you know i was really looking forward to seeing him fight you know, but it was yep. a lot of people on the undercar I never heard of, but I was shocked, amazed, and entertained from the time I sat down to the time I left. You know, and so yep. tonight was one of them things too where I was kind of engaged, you know, um, with the fight. I, I wasn't really feeling that near that neary fight, you know, but um, like I said, Jamel came in and closed the show uh, in emphatic fashion, had him mm -hmm. split, banana split on the ground. Damn right. And like I said, you, you Dominicans. <laughs> Y'all mm -hmm. better eat y'all crow, cause y'all, like I said, y'all, y'all, how you going down an American, but you want to be an American so bad. Yeah. You want to yep. copy everything that African Americans do, but you want to separate yourself from African Americans. You want to mm -hmm. try to make it seem like you better than African Americans. The way y'all doing, my brothers and sisters over in Haiti, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to America and hate on American blacks. Also, you should be ashamed mm -hmm. of yourself for that. So any Dominican fighter. That harbors any kind of bigotry in their spirit and they soul. I hope you get crushed too. I hope you yep. get crushed too. And that goes for Cubans, Colombians, anybody from the Caribbean, anybody that got anything against a black fighter. I hope you get crushed just for the simple fact of the disrespect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, crushed in the ring. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep it about sports. That's what we're going to keep it about. Until you pay your respect, I hope you never, I hope you never uh, succeed or, 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 or achieve anything until you show proper respect and that's the same thing goes with the fans i hope y'all continue to be uh, disappointed you know um the 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 respect it should it should be solidified unanimously if you're a real boxing fan but mm -hmm. hey you know we can't force people you know we got to move on to the next and it's like i said the best is yet to come for the charlos i can't exactly. wait to see who they uh who they put up on the block next against them you know i look forward to it exactly bottom line is this man the charlo brothers they did their thing they tore it up and respect has to be put on their names because like i said before they fought quality opponents i mean this is going to be the key staple terminology that's going to be used throughout this live stream quality opponents this is what fight fans were saying the charlo brothers are not fighting quality opponents they're not doing quality heavyweight lifting they're not showcasing themselves as quality field brothers that's doing quality field things. That's false. 
That's a negative. Bottom line is they put in the quality work. Tonight, the, both of their performances stood out. Tonight, both of their performances shine. Salute to you, Khalil Nebit. Bottom line is they did their fucking thing, and it's time to put respect on their names. I mean, it's just that simple. If you can't get behind the Charlo brothers tonight, then you are have to question yourself as a fight fan. Whether you like the Charlo brothers or not, you should either be fixing your mouth to say that they had a great performance and saying something out of your rabbit ass mouth, or if you've been supporting them, you're vindicated, you're validated. Those that have been supporting the Charlo brothers are officially validated. The Charlo brothers, they ran, they ruled the day, they ruled the show, they dominated, and that's just no two ways around that, man. The twins are the truth. Now it's about who is the next one in line to get exposed by the Charlo brothers. That's going to be the underlying question. That's going to be the underlying truth. Who's going to be next to step up to the plate and fight the Charlo brothers? That's what I want to see. Truth be told, 154, who's left? Whoever has that last belt, Jamel Charlo needs to go ahead and become undisputed. And then after that, I don't need Jamel Charlo staying at 154. After he becomes undisputed at 154, he needs to go ahead and move up to 160. That's the what I'm looking at, the climate, the forecast that I'm looking at from Jamel Charlo. When I'm looking at Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo has a few more opponents that he needs to face at 160. And then after that, I want Jamal Charlo to move up to 168 because I think Jamal Charlo would be solid at 168 against the likes of the Caleb Plants of the world, against the likes of David Benavidez of the world, against the likes of Caleb Smith of the world. Jamal Charlo would actually call these opponents out, something that Canelo Alvarez is allergic to, something that Canelo Alvarez is unwilling to do. And if Derrick James does not get fighter, and if Derrick James does not get trainer of the year, we have a fucking problem. That's just the way that I look at it. Thank you, Dante DB Monta Track. He said Derrick James is trainer of the year, no doubt. That's facts. Because what we're seeing in Derrick James is stable is that he's taking fighters that are having maybe a few errors or are not complete. And he's making them complete from a technical and a fundamental. It's not the prettiest, but you won't be technically savvy. You won't be fundamentally savvy. And what we're seeing is there's a pattern with Derrick James and the way that he trains these fighters. They are what we call accumulation punishment artists. Yes, I was the first one to say that. Remember, remember this is this this is what you both heard it here. Accumulation punishment artists. That's what Derrick James is creating out here in his stable. Earl the True Spence um, punishes his opponents by an accumulation of assault of punishment. Mel Charlo does it differently. He does it from a venomous viper strike fashion. When me and Ox were talking off rip outside of this, we were talking about how Jamel Charlo was hitting him, buckling him with that venomous viper strike because it's so fast, you don't see it coming. But when it actually hits you, it makes you buckle. 503 line said, great combination of points, great show. Texas takeover, LDBC in the building. Salute to you, bro. Bottom line is this. When we look at what the Charlo brothers are bringing to the table, the Charlo brothers ain't nothing to play with, man. They're nothing to play with. And the Charlo brothers made a name for themselves. If you talk about validation, if you're talking about getting their get back on a double header, I would like to see them together more on a double header. Because truth be told, Ox, this is something that's unique. This is something that's rare. This is not something that we're, we've seen before in boxing with two brothers twins at that that have the symbiotic relationship that they have that feel each other's pain that they have fight one after the another and then dominate in the fashion that they do we got to give them credit man just like tom spencer said derrick james is the man khalil nibbe said trainer of the year two unified champs that's facts and what we're looking at potentially here is derrick james could eventually get trainer of the year in 2020 and potentially get trained in the year 2021 you know why i'm saying this ox because you got two fighters that are unified champs 2020 right 2021 
you can have two fighters that are undisputed see i want y'all to have a things that make you say mm, moment two fighters that are unified in 2020 in 2021 two fighters that could potentially become undisputed that's unheard of that is a sweep and that speaks volumes and you know what i look at this as um ox remember we talked about floyd mayweather we talked about the May, uh, mayweather promotions Derrick james is slowly but surely creating a stable to where other fighters need to start looking his way if they need to fix some tools up technically if they need to fix fi uh, fix some tools up fundamentally it ain't gonna be the prettiest thing it ain't gonna be the slickest but it's gonna get the fucking job done and it's gonna be tight it's gonna be right and it's gonna make sure that it does, does what it's supposed to that's what i'm seeing from the derrick james stable that's what i'm seeing from their camp i want you to talk about his camp and talk about derrick james as a trainer and where he is at and what is his ultimate climate out here in these boxing streets you're on mute Ox. you know people haven't really been paying attention to his stride until recently you know they haven't really been paying attention to what he's been doing and uh you know like the fighters that he fights you know he the fighters that he's training mm -hmm. um you know he deserves more respect than what he gets. He deserves more credit than what he gets. Um, but it's not about seeking, you know, outside approval and, and validation. Sometimes you got to just keep working. You know, at the end of the day, you know, his fighters are, are, are winning. We know who the trainer of the year is. Whether they acknowledge it or not, he'll always be, you know, one of the most legendary trainers, you know, in the game. You know, uh he's doing a good job with the guys that he has and I, I do see more people coming over and trying to train under him but i don't want that to take away from the magic that he has with the charlo brothers i don't want them to be spread too thin they got a good thing going and uh for the people that didn't believe in them before stay your raggedy ass where you at <laughs> because you should have been to key to him being who he is and and paying attention to what he's done you know so kind of like that no new friends thing but he seems like the kind of person that probably would help some folks and you don't know who else he's developing and grooming behind the scenes that we haven't heard about yet and so uh you know like i said man the best is yet to come these guys are climbing up you know i, I would like to see uh charlo you said you know you want to see charlo move up but i would like to see him have a few contender fights not contender but you know people who are trying to you know challenge the bill or contend for the belt you know uh def you know a few belt defenses is what i'm saying um, before mm -hmm. he moves up into the into another weight class, defend the, the straps or whatever, become undisputed, undisputed, and uh, you know maybe do a couple defenses and then move up. You know, uh, see if anybody want to try to you know take you know knock you off the top of the hill. You know what I mean? And uh, you know just move up from there. So, like I said, man, they got the the possibilities are kind of endless for mm -hmm. these guys, man. Uh, all they got to do is continue to stay focused. And the, the thing about Charlo. Little Jam uh, Jamel, the first thing he said when he looked into the camera was, you know, thank God, you know, thank God. Without without God, all things, you know, none, none of this would be possible. That's the first thing that came out of his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Humble. You know, mm -hmm. how can you dislike a person like that? He's not a Bible beater. You know what I'm saying? He's just giving credit to the universe. You know, exactly. he's, not, he's not a Bible beater. He don't be quoting scriptures and stuff like that or whatever. But he's humble enough to know that there's a higher power in control of his life. And he believes in the blessings, you know, that he's prayed about. He believes that he's supposed to be there. So these are qualities and traits that people, you know, should admire, but because, mm -hmm. because he's melanated, it's an issue, you know, uh, it is what it is. But like I said, man, I had a good time tonight. You know, it's been a long day, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that this weekend, Ended on a good note. I'm, I'm glad that the uh, the style bender won also uh, because there was a lot of hype, you know, in that fight. I guess we need to kind of start covering some more UFC stuff also because mm -hmm. that's a combat sport um, that I have a lot of perspective on myself also. And uh, I was kind of trying to do a split screen and watch both of them. So, like I said, my weekend is set. It's made. I had a good, a good weekend as far as fights go. Um, you know, I enjoyed the entertainment, man, and it's been cool rocking with y'all throughout this whole process man mm -hmm. bottom line is this man before we close out man 
I look at it like this, Ox. The Charlo brothers, man, they they've this is what we call a caveat. This is what we call a swan song. This is what we call a the chickens have come to roost. This is what we call a validation. This is what we call a coronation. This is what we call lions only being exactly what they are lions only these guys were faced with adversity the last time that the both of them fought together one had a controversial decision in his favor the other one had a controversial decision that didn't go in his favor most fighters when they have that happen to their boxing career they fold like a pretzel let me say it again they fold like a pretzel yeah that and then made a lot of fighters not ever want to do anything like that again exactly they don't want to go through that tumultuous experience they don't want to go through that adversity and what adversity does is adversity does one or two things it either breeds character and it makes you best friends with it or you basically get burst by the pipes of adversity because adversity is a form of pressure and what the charlo brothers proved in that form of pressure is that they could take the adversity by the bullhorns they could dedicate themselves they could lock on, they could focus, and they could recharge and turn themselves around. I knew Mel was focused. I knew Mel was ready to go. I knew Mel was dedicated when right before the fight happened, that little interlude, that little those little comments that he said between what happened to him after that controversial loss in the Tony Harrison fight. He said he didn't enjoy Christmas. A competitor would not fucking enjoy Christmas. Not losing like that. You want to go back into the lab. You want to make sure that you get your get back. And could you imagine, Ox, this man went almost 12 months with that shit on his brain because Tony Harrison and them were supposed to fight in June, but then he ended up fighting a tune-up or a last-minute opponent because Tony Harrison supposedly wore Louis Vuitton shoes, but we all know how the fuck are you wearing tight-ass Louis Vuitton shoes when you got an ankle injury? That don't make no sense because Louis Vuitton shoes, they suck your circulation out of you. We hear this all the time with women that wear Louis Vuitton shoes. And we even hear this from some brothers that wear it too. It's a tight ass shoe. It sucks the oxygen out of your foot. So how did that make sense? It's because Tony Harrison was trying to ride off of that fucking championship longer than he needs to. And you know what that did? It made Jamel Charlo that much more hungrier. It made him that much more in the lab. It made him that much more dedicated to his craft. Harrison knew what was coming. Exactly. He was he was he was, da- he was dazed many times in that fight. You know, he was dazed. You know, mm-hmm. he was out on his feet many times in that fight. He knew the kind of power he was facing again. Yep. And that's and that's why yep. he stalled out. And then after the fight, he gonna say, "Oh, uh, it was something inside the Gatorade bottle. It was something in that bottle." Mm-hmm. Oh my God, bro. Exactly. <laughs> and then the on. bottom line is this. And the bottom line is this because I'm glad that you said that. Mel made sure. That that fight wasn't going to go 12. And I remember when I watched them fight the way they did. Salute to you, Wanetta Jones. I mean, salute to you, Wanetta Thomas. She said, Ma and Mel got the job done tonight. Damn right they did, Wanetta Thomas. They got the fucking job done tonight. And you got to give the Charlo brothers credit. That's what I'm talking about, man. When it's all said and done, what we saw from both fighters is we saw that they were faced with adversity. They turned adversity around. They said that this would not be what it was going to be. This was not how they were going to tell their fucking story. And they stepped up to the plate. They vindicated themselves. And now they could look up and they could celebrate. That's why you saw the older brother was celebrating with the younger brother after he won his fight. Because they knew what they accomplished tonight. They knew that they basically hit the history books. They knew they did something unprecedented as twins. And something has to be said for that. That's credibility on top of credibility right there, man. This whole week, I'm going to be doing a litany of videos where I'm going to be basically supporting the Charlo brothers, man. Because I just feel they need to have respect put on their name for everything that they went through that last week. And how they turned everything around. How they were able to bounce back. How they were able to fight all of the odds. Because it wasn't just the odds in the ring. It was also the odds outside of the ring. Let me say it again. It wasn't just the odds in the ring. It was the odds outside of the ring. They had to deal with the challenge of fight fans that were telling them 
that they were Charlo's sisters, that was telling them that they were bums, that was telling them that they don't have quality opposition in their belt, a quality opposition in their backyard, that they have they don't fight quality opponents. But what did they do? They stepped up, they stepped into the fire, and they showcased themselves as real champions. This is what Floyd Mayweather talks about when he says a real champion knows how to bounce back and a real champion knows how to step up to the plate and get the job done. And that's what they did. They got the job done. So at this point, it's time to give the Lions only credit. It's time to put respect on the Charlo brothers' name. And it's time to give credit where credit is due when it's all said and done. Any closing things you got to say, Ox? Now, one thing that I paid attention to is, uh, especially with the Jamel fight, when they walked out, Banana, you know, his skin was bone dry. Mm-hmm. Skin was bone dry. Biggest fight of your life, you know what I'm saying? To unify more of the belts or, or obtain another belt. Um, you bone dry? Yep. I said, okay, let me see how Charlo going to come out. Charlo came out in a full sweat. Mm-hmm. Reminiscent of Tyson, reminiscent of a lot of the mm-hmm. greats, warmed up, ready to go. I was expecting Charlo to come out the gates like a bat out of hell, like how he normally do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he was very methodical. Both brothers were very methodical, very patient. Mm-hmm. And um, people don't want to get him their credit for that. I was even kind of like, I was so used to seeing uh, Big Charlo uh, lay people out. I wanted him to press the action more, but I had to, you know, hold back on that or whatever when i really took a a look at what he was actually doing the method that he was actually employing so like i said man you know big salute to the charlos to lion it's only to uh derrick james especially and roddy shields um they both did an amazing job the brothers did an amazing job the undercard did an amazing job you know appreciate uh so you know showtime and uh appreciate what's going on in the sport of boxing and i just hope that some of the more notable names in boxing will come out from the woodwork and start taking on bigger challenges. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm, I'm glad that this venture, you know, that they redeemed themselves and some. And, uh, you know, I look forward to what's going to happen, what's going to happen in the future. Man, great words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Great closing thoughts. Bottom line is this, man. For all of those that se- se- celebrated and all of those that that knew that the Charlo brothers will win, man, y'all need to celebrate tonight, man, because, like I said, we haven't had a great fight like this or a great set of fights like this in a while. 2020 has been a wild roller coaster year. It's been filled with COVID. It's been filled with trials and travails. It's been filled with a whole bunch of fiasco, man. It's been filled with BLM. It's been filled with everything, man, and that's still going on in this calendar 2020 year we've had some notable people that have died i.e chad with bozeman all of these notable people that have passed away people are still passing away i mean it's just a lot but to see that these brothers in the midst of this year were able to do what they did and to turn things around if that's not facing adversity in his face and catching it by his bullhorns and saying that we're going to showcase the people that this is now how our story is going to end and that our story is going to end on the right note, then I don't know what is, man. So that's why I say Jamel, Jamal, Charlo Brothers, Lions Only, they get all of the damn salute of the day because they represent it, man. They gave us great performances, and they did it differently. One did it from a boxing pedigree standpoint. The other one did it from a knockout artist's standpoint. But what we got was two exciting fights. And if folks are not giving respect out here in these boxing streets, then you're not a real fight fan. You can't call yourself a real fight fan. See, Jack, like Jaguar Assassin said, PC knows the sport family. Been gone for a minute. Those Charlos are dangerous. Damn right they are, man. And people know that the Charlo brothers are just warming up. They're 30 years old. We're talking about another three to five years. That, And I'm saying I'm leaning about five years that they could dominate. Because the way that these guys are at 30 years old, they look fresh, man. I'm not going to lie to you. They look like they're more like 25 years old being 30-year-olds. They look fresh out here in these boxing streets. So now I want to see fight fans put the pressure on the Canelo Alvarez's of the world and say, hey, 
Jamal Charlo has stepped up to the plate. Where are you at? Because everybody kept saying Jamal Charlo needs to fight a quality opponent. That's what he's that's what he's done. Right. Jamel Charlo has stepped up to the plate. And I want to see him become undisputed at 154. That's my goal for the Charlo brothers. That's my ceiling for them and their current respective weight classes. And then when they transition on, on and they just then I'll have other uh, requirements for them. But that is the requirements that I have for them at this point to see them do their things continually, to see them dedicate themselves to their craft, and to see them take this shit seriously. And hats off to the trainers, because the trainers tonight, i.e. Ronnie Shields and Derek James, gave some hell of fire training in between rounds. I was listening to the, the, the direction, I was listening to the instructions that they were giving the fighters, and every round they were telling them the key stuff they needed to hear for that particular round. That doesn't get enough credit out here in these black histories, and it doesn't get enough praise, but I have to give it to them because they told their fighters exactly what they needed to hear at that critical moment, and that propelled them to get the victory that they got because you guys have to understand, uh, fighters are used to a fan field experience. They didn't get that, and some fighters, they get knockouts, or some fighters perform better when they have that crowd, you know what I'm saying, to cheer them on. It's kind of like you know old school gladiator you know when they they see the crowd they hear the crowd they hear the crowd roaring or the crowd uh ushering their names family in the stands friends in the stands you know what i'm saying associates in the stand cheering them on that gives them that extra um factor for them to perform and the fact that they perform minus that that speaks volume yes because everyone does not perform well without having that extra um and they did that so when it's all said and done, if nobody gives the Charlo brothers credit for the job that they did, then you're not about the sport of boxing. And that's all I got to say with that. Any last things you want to say, Ox? You know, I, you know, uh, Derrick James, you know, said it for me. What happened, man? You give him a seizure? <laughs> 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 Derrick James didn't even know what happened, man. Derrick James mm -hmm. was like, damn, man, what, what, what happened? You know, Incredible night, man. Like I said, it's been cool rocking with y'all. See, so got my boy yawning already, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, man, have a good night, man. A long see, night, man. man. A good weekend. Dreams, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like I said, everybody have a good night and a good weekend, man. I appreciate rocking with y'all. Man, y'all have a great night, Ox. Appreciate the contributions, everyone in the chat. Sure. Appreciate y'all, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share. Donate to the platform, super chat or cash app whatever y'all can give y'all sunday's best we appreciate it we're gonna keep bringing you guys that heat and that far and we're gonna keep putting the foot on the what on the next we're gonna keep the foot on the what on the next y'all have a great saturday night this was a big epic night for the charlo brothers salute to the charlo brothers for doing their damn thing salute to everyone that supported them and even if you didn't support the charlo brothers it's all one love peace peace